Hello, family of believers, seekers of God, all of the things in between. Um, I just wanted to get on here and share with you guys just how amazing God is, um, how loving he is and how patient he is. And to talk to you about, you know, when you're in a season of your faith where you might be questioning things, um, the validity of things, where you're looking into, you know, just wanting to really understand God and connect with him on a deeper level. Um, and all of us, I think, if we're honest, sorry, I'm out of breath. I was just running right around the house, um, have questions. We have doubts. We have concerns. We have things that are not so clear to us when it comes to our faith walk principles of God, how things should really look, how things should really be going, how simple it is, how complex it might be. And um, I have been on quite a journey the last few years and recently had got um, kind of, I would say all things work for your good. Hi, Lisa. Um, but I kind of was getting distracted in my walk with the Lord because I started getting really disturbed by how religion has really caused a lot of harm to people. And I think as Christians, it's very easy for us to only want to talk about all the good we do, you know, in terms of feeding the homeless and you know, all the ministries we have and we post pictures and, you know, and we tend to only, we tend to always claim and take, um, pride in all the good that we do, but we often don't acknowledge sometimes the harm that our faith has caused. Um, and I won't say faith in its purest far, form as far as what Christ actually teaches, but our attempts to put God in a box, our attempts to live out what we think, you know, sometimes we're misinterpreting or whatever like that. And it can cause us to cause harm to people. Um, and I'm not saying that, and I always say this, I never think anybody's intentions are impure. I think a lot of us are just doing the best we can, striving for the faith, doing our best to live for God and understand what it is that he's called us to do. But sometimes in our striving, we can misinterpret things and we can mistreat people and we can miss the point of the faith, which is, which is to um, be living testimonies of a relationship with Christ to the world. Not so much what we say, but more how we live, excuse me guys, more how we live and how we uh, treat people. And so, you know, I was having some questions, you know, um, you know, how do I know Christ? <laughs> how do I know Christianity is the right faith to have? You know, because I was looking at a bunch of other faiths. I was looking at cults and all that kind of stuff and I was getting very disturbed if I'm quite honest with you because a lot of these cults started out with very pure Christian intentions of wanting to create a better world and they went left very quickly because a lot of the cult leaders went from honoring a God to believing they were God and they wanted the loyalty of the people they wanted the resources and the talents of the people and then we, you know, if you look at cult history, it, it went down some really scary paths, to say the least. Um, and then that kind of opened the door for where I was looking at, you know, what is the commonality amongst all of the worldviews, all of amongst all of the religions? And there is some fundamental commonalities as term is in terms of morality, in terms of being kind, in terms of forgiveness, in terms of taking care of those who are in need, speaking up for those who don't have a voice, that type of stuff. There was some moral commonalities across the board. Um, the, the most deciphering difference was Christ and his deity. A lot of other worldviews do acknowledge Jesus Christ, but they do not acknowledge him as 100% man, 100% God. They don't acknowledge him as the son of God. They acknowledge him as a teacher, as a prophet, as a really good person, that was an example for us to have, but they don't acknowledge him as God. And what I found when I was seeking answers, what I, what I am grateful for in my journey when I was seeking answers is that what I found common amongst most religions or occults is that they try really hard to disprove Christ as savior. And I thought that was interesting. And 
even when I was talking to my husband today, I was like, the another commonality I find is that Jesus' name is one of the only names that you ever hear, hear used in vain a lot. You, you know, people don't stub their toe and say, oh, Buddha or oh, Muhammad or whatever. You, it's, oh, it's Jesus. You know, that name or oh, God, that name gets used in vain a whole lot. And um, anyway, the point of this video is to tell you guys that you are, you know, and my husband brought up this point. If Thomas, being one of the disciples who literally walked with Jesus, doubted, who are we to think we won't ever encounter doubts and concerns? Um, but if you look at that testimony, when Thomas was doubting, Jesus said, here, put your hand and put your hand in my wounds. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I got from that is when you're in doubt, when you're having questions, when things aren't clear to you, turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Um, and it made me think of, again, that, you know, the story of the Garden of Eden, where we have the tree of life, who symbolically represents Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which makes you open and aware to all things, things that we didn't need to be open and aware to. And so I found myself having a Garden of Eden experience where I had some questions, um, I thought that I was missing something for some reason. And it, it strikes me as funny because three weeks ago, I literally came on here to share with you guys the way the enemy works is he creates a deficiency. He makes you believe you're missing something. And then I literally went through that right after I made that video. I think that's ironic. Um, and so I was like, am I missing something? Is, you know, am I wrong? Is all of this just a big scam? I feel like it's been used as a method to control people. We have all of these divisions within the faith, you know, and I was just feeling kind of turned off to it, to be honest with you guys. But I know I've had experiences with God. I know I've heard from him. I, so there was things I couldn't completely erase in this journey I went on, but, um, I had questions. I had questions and I was giving myself permission to consider, could I be wrong? And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it brought me full circle to understand why Christ teaches the things he teaches. And so some of the things that I wanted to point out is that it's not wrong to have doubts. It's not wrong. It's not inhuman that you're going to question. Okay. Um, what can be dangerous is what you turn to to get those answers. Um, there's a lot of worldviews, there's a lot of teachings, there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of arguments, um, and they all sound good, you guys, they all sound good. And that's why God tells us to be careful about teachings of men, or the Bible talks about doctrines of devils, um, because anything that puts itself up against the authority and the divinity of Christ he says to have nothing to do with those things because it will cause you guys, in essence, to dismantle your faith. And the Bible talks about how in the last days there will be apostasy. And apostasy is simply a renouncing of a belief, a, a falling away from a belief or a faith. Okay. And so there are a lot. Uh, and I almost did it. <laughs> I'm going to be I almost did it, you guys, where. When I was looking at all this other knowledge, I was like, wow, they're making some really valid points in my opinion. And I found myself almost becoming apostate. I, I almost fell away because it made sense on a carnal, logical, intellectual level. And all of what they were saying didn't sound evil. It sounded good. But at the end of the day, what it promoted was you're a God. You're a God. And so I said, well, I'm not going to make any decisions without going back to the Bible and doing some, I'm going to take myself through the Bible before I make any type of solid decision on anything. Right. And so I just started to read Acts, the establishment of the church. And I'm going to tell you guys, it was exactly what I needed to read. It was exactly where I needed to be. And what I came to realize is that when you say you're a follower of Christ, it's very similar 
because it's a covenant. You're entering into a covenant with God, right? It's very simple or simple or similar to a marriage covenant. When I married my husband, I said, I said, I am making it, a, I'm making the world aware that I'm identified as a peacock now. Hi, Stephen. And I'm saying no to every other man out there. So when we come into a relationship with Christ, when we have that change of mind or repentance, we're in essence saying, I'm saying no to everything the world off offers, the knowledge of the world, the different religions, all the different worldviews, the teachings, philosophies, and doctrines. And I'm saying yes to Christ. I'm willingly placing myself under the authority of Christ. And I understand that the life I live is no longer my own, but it's Christ living through me. And that's what we're saying. That's what the repentance produces is allegiance to Christ. And then through baptism, we are identified with Christ. Just like through marriage, when I take on my husband's last name, I'm identified as with him. I'm identified with Ray. Okay. And so it's the same thing when we come into that covenant with God is I am saying I am placing myself and identifying myself with and in Christ. And that also means his teachings. And what he says, I am believing is truth. And so um, that stood out to me as I was kind of going through this spiritual faith crisis, if you will. And I, I was thinking of a few scriptures because I was like, well, God, what is so wrong with me questioning my faith? What is so wrong with me? Sorry, it's my six month old blowing bubbles. What is wrong with me questioning my faith? What is wrong with me seeing what else is out there so that I know why I'm choosing this faith? And the danger... You can do it. You have free will. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But doing whatever you want may not always be the best thing for you. And um, so what happened to me as I was looking at all these other religions and I was looking at all of these other faiths to confirm what I believe, it actually started to deconstruct my faith. It started to pull it apart. And it started to make me very confused and skeptical. Um, and so... I'm glad that I had the wherewithal to go back to the word, to go back to the logos, right? And so some of the scriptures that I wanted to share with you guys, if you find yourself in a position where you're questioning things, where you're kind of deconstructing in a way, um, is to always turn back to Christ. Go back to the word, okay? And take your questions there. Take your questions back to the good teacher, Jesus Christ, okay? Um, but some scriptures I wanted to tell you guys about, it, and, and we tend to be thirsty people for knowledge. Um, and my husband actually brought this scripture up to me, but it's 1 Corinthians 8, 1 that says they were actually talking about food being offered to idols. And he said, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. However, knowledge puffeth up. And other virgin says, knowledge provokes your pride. Okay, when we feel very knowledgeable in something, we usually take a prideful stance. Okay, but he said, but love builds the body. Okay, and so um, I'm not saying it's bad to have knowledge, but what God actually calls us to have is wisdom. Okay, and so that takes me to uh, Proverbs, which is still loading, but Proverbs says, Get wisdom. This is Proverbs 4, 5. Get wisdom and get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. And so it's not that it's bad that we get an understanding, but we have to remember whose understanding are we getting? The understanding and the knowledge of the world or the understanding and the knowledge of Christ? Those, they're very two different things, and they will take you down two very different paths. Okay, and that's why he goes on to say, after in all thy ways get an understanding, do not forget my words or turn away from them. And that's what I was accidentally doing. And that is the sneakiness of the devil, you guys, is that he will always manipulate your affection for God to pull you out of the will of God. And we saw that happen in the Garden of Eden where he said to Eve, you, if you eat of this tree of knowledge, even though God told you not to, if you eat of this tree of knowledge, you will be just like God. So he was manipulating her affection for God and promising her that she would be just like the one she loved so dearly. Right. And so, you know, the understanding that we're getting and the wisdom that we're walking in is God's wisdom. 
not the wisdom of the world, the knowledge nope. of the world I, simply will puff you up. It'll bee. simply stroke your pride and your ego, right? But the wisdom and the knowledge of God Stop. creates humility. It creates humility. And we have to understand that when we're entering into that relationship with God and receiving that gift of salvation, that we're not only receiving um, our Savior, but we're also receiving um, His authority as our Lord. And I think sometimes that's really missed because we love the gift of salvation, but we do not like submitting to Him as an authoritative figure, even though the authority that He exercises is from a place of love, like a parent, right? Um, and sometimes that can make us feel very controlled. And I will, and it is fair to argue that Christianity throughout history has been manipulated and used in a very perverse way to control mass groups of people. So there has been a perversion of what I would say true Christianity is throughout the years that have given it a very bad look. But the Christ of the scriptures and his teachings, that's why I think it's so important that you study for yourself you will see that a lot of things that man has done with quote unquote Christianity is not what Christ teaches. And so you have to get to know him for yourself. You have to get to know him for yourself. And so, um, get a get wisdom and get understanding, but do not forget my words. So the understanding you're getting is God's understanding. And that also took me to the scripture that tells us there's a scripture that says for my, and it's hard. Submitting to the authority of God sometimes and the distinctions that he makes um, can be very difficult sometimes because they can contradict what we feel okay with, right? But we have to remember, I was just reading in the scripture, um, I was reading in Malachi, and it talks about God makes distinctions between righteousness and wickedness. It's God's distinction and God's right and sovereignty to say what is righteous and to say what is wicked. And a lot of times we try to make God think like us. And his thoughts, according to Isaiah 55 and 8, say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And so we have to remember that he does not think like us. And we keep trying to put God down on our level to justify certain things that we and our carnality are okay with, right? And it's really hard sometimes to accept God's standards and expectations and teachings on things because it goes against what the world tells us okay. It goes against, you know, certain things that in our own self, maybe we don't really care that much about, but God makes the distinction that it's wicked or it's righteous, right? And so... If we're saying we believe Christ, then we have to accept what he says and submit to it. Not from a position of pride and puffed up knowledge, but from a position of understanding that whatever he just makes, whatever he creates those distinctions in is from his wisdom and the fact that he sees all and understands all on a level that we don't comprehend. Right? And so I love that. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways declares the Lord uh, Ray Ray please stop okay and so what do we do when we come up against various teachings philosophies doctrines worldviews that go in opposition to what Christ teaches according to the scripture he says in first second Corinthians 10 5 that we destroy those arguments and every lofty opinion that raises itself against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive to obedience to Christ. But a lot of times in our quest and our search, we start to take, make Christ bow down to the lofty opinions and arguments that the world provides. And we ask Christ to bow down to that. Or we will leave Christ for other other teachings of man-made teachings or teachings of the devil, as the scriptures like to call it. He also tells us, be careful what you think in Proverbs 4.23, because your thoughts run your life. And so what you believe to be true is how you will live your life, right? And so when I went on this journey this past week, I had two days where I, I allowed myself to consider that Christ was just a story. He was just a summation of 
messianic heroes from the past that the Rome, you know, that people put together as a way to control and get people to submit to Roman authority. There's a ton of theories out there, but I let myself believe it for two days. And it was the loneliest two days of my life to live in a world where there is no God. To live in the world where I was considering that all of it's fake. And I'm sharing this very openly and honestly because I don't believe I'm the only person going through, has, who has gone through that or who has had these questions or has gone there. And I have loved Christ pretty much all my life. And I went through two days where I was, where I literally thought, what if I'm out of my mind and I am just believing in a figment of my imagination? Who have I been talking to all of this time, right? And I don't know if anybody else can relate, but I just felt led to share my testimony because a lot of people would look at me and think, oh gosh, she's so strong in her faith. She's so devout and all of these things, but I'm still human, you guys. And when you expose yourself to things that puff themselves up against the authority of Christ, it can mess you up. And so, yes, I would say it is good to know why you believe what you believe. You guys hear me preach that all the time. Know why you believe what you believe. Be ready to give an answer for the faith that you proclaim to have. That's what the scriptures tell us, to be ready in season and out of season to do that. Right? But be careful where you take your questions. Be careful where you find your answers. Are you turning to the tree of life, which is Christ and his word, or are you turning to the tree of knowledge? The tree of knowledge has never served us well. It's never served us well. And so I'm just so thankful that God already warns us how to guard our heart, how to protect ourselves from these deceiving forces that are in the world that would try to cause us to fall away from the faith. Um, and so I also like this. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. And that's going to come from fellowshipping with God, fellowshipping with other believers, and getting in the word of God for yourself and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you. So that you're not conformed to the ways of the world. Because the world has various doctrines, various worldviews, various religions. And it's not about that. It's about relationship with your creator. And I do believe that we all come to a road where we have an encounter with Jesus, who is the way to the Father. And we have a choice at that moment to choose Christ or to choose our choose something else. Or in essence, we become our own God because we think we know better. Right? And so I just want to encourage you guys that it's normal and very human to have questions, to have doubts, to even question the very foundation of your faith. But turn back to Christ. Every time you you get into that place of uncertainty, turn back to Christ. Turn to him. Get the answers from him. Stay in your word daily. Fellowship with the Lord daily. Fellowship with other believers daily. That you may encourage one another to continue in the faith. Why would God say continue, encourage each other with these words so that you may continue in the faith? Why would he say push towards the goal? Because there is constant opposition. There is forces out there who want to cause you to lose your identity in Christ. Who want you to lose your foundation. Who want to strip and rob you of a restored relationship with God. It's very real. I just went through it literally after I warned myself about it. Okay. Um, and I'm so glad that God convicted me to make these video diaries because I went back and watched that just on a whim. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is literally what I went through. It's literally what I went through. And, um, so I do think it's important to study to show yourself approved, but, but when God says study to show yourself approved, what he's asking you to study is his word, the truth, not every other, uh, platform of knowledge that exists out there because it will contradict and puff itself up against the authority of Christ. It absolutely will. And we're called to destroy those arguments and lofty opinions and take them captive to Christ. I want to actually read what the rest of that scripture says. So second Corinthians two, five, second Corinthians. Hold on my friends. Okay, here we go. 
two five. Uh, am I reading that right? Ten five. Excuse me. Ten five. Okay, so it says right here, Paul defends his authority. So, uh, okay, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war in the world. We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, the weapons we have have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments in every pretension or lofty opinion. That sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ and we will be ready and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. So, you know, it's it like there's nothing you ever go through, guys, that God is not like that's why we have to fellowship with the Lord. That's why we have to get in this word daily. And really allow the Holy Spirit to teach us um, because I think I, I very much could have avoided going on that roller coaster if I had just turned to my word um, instead of the, the other resources that I turned to. And so it was a good lesson learned. I'm thankful that God allowed me to go through it because now I 100% know why I choose Christ. Even though I've always believed in him, I know why I choose him now. And, um, I, perhaps God allowed that cause he knew I needed, I needed to go through that because a lot of times we enter into our Christian faith because it's what's been passed down to us and we don't actually know why we believe it, but we just been told this is what you should believe. You don't question it. And yeah, there is wisdom in not questioning it because when you start to question it outside of the scriptures, it will take you down a rabbit hole. So there is wisdom in that, but I think we need to go into deeper conversations with people as to why Christ and answer, take the time to answer their questions and really disciple people and really help them understand how to get into the scriptures and how to hear, how to hear from God and all of those things, because it's very easy to get led astray. That's why he says, don't lean on your own understanding. He also says, don't, you can't trust your own heart. And I think it's in Psalms where he says, you can't trust your heart is these Psalms or Proverbs where you cannot trust your own heart because it's easily misled and misguided. And I literally just experienced, <laughs> literally just experienced that. And I, I do. I thank God for allowing me to go through that journey. But I also am so thankful that I have a heavenly father who doesn't let me get too far off. You know, he, he pulled me back in and he showed me why I went through that. And he also gave me a much deeper personal insight as to why we always turn to Christ. We always turn to the scripture. We always turn to our brothers and sisters in Christ and not other things outside of that because 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 they will literally cause you to go down a rabbit hole and then you will find yourself questioning the very faith that you've been you have been living you know um and I don't think it's wrong to question your faith in terms of going to God for a deeper understanding so that you know why so you can explain to people what you believe but you do have to be careful about how you go about it because you will wind up deconstructing your faith <laughs> and you will wind up serving some, you will wind up being pulled to serve something else or worship yourself for that matter. Because a lot of these other worldviews and teachings out there promote you as a deity. And so you have to be very, very careful with that. Um, so I wanted to share as a, just being very transparent that I think we all go through this at some point. Um, and if you don't, amen. Um, but also as a, a little bit of a, um, a warning, if you will, to get your questions answered, your doubts, um, solidified, not solidify your doubts, but whatever you're doubting, allow the Lord to solidify it for you by turning to him, by turning to him. Um, so I just wanted to share that. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, comments, you know, any experiences that you have had, if you've ever been there. But I do appreciate those of you who have tuned in and watched and support this ministry and have walked with me on my journey and have just always been very loving and supportive um, as I'm growing and maturing in the faith. And now I can give a reason for the faith that I have, having even more so having gone through this experience. But I just wanted to share with you guys in case there's anybody else out there who found themselves on a similar journey and maybe you did leave the faith um maybe you did 
or maybe you almost did, or maybe right now you're considering leaving the faith. I would encourage you to give Christ one more go, get in your word, see what he says. And I promise you, he'll make it clear. He will make it clear. All right, you guys, I love you. And I will talk to you next time.